Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this video today. In this one, I'm gonna be talking about how to develop clean and sharp punching technique, or what's sometimes called aesthetic technique. Now, the term aesthetic carries a bit of a negative connotation these days because there's a sort of split when it's used in the bodybuilding world between people that are just training for looks over functionality and strength. But when it comes to striking, the word aesthetic has a bit of a different meaning because it's not exactly a hard and fast rule, but generally when a technique looks nice to the eye, when someone throws a really nice cross, for instance, that's very sharp and whippy, it generally means that's an effective punch, which is why when we see a professional boxer moving around, someone who's very seasoned and has been doing it for a long time, we can just tell by watching them, even if they're not actually hitting against something, that those punches carry some real stopping power. So I've noticed this general tendency that happens with people when we're sort of training together or when I'm speaking to them about their technique, they're able to sort of make those corrections on the fly in that moment, yet when they get back in their regular training environment, it all goes over their head and they slip back into their old way of doing things. It feels that they're moving in a certain way and they get quite um, buzzed up, you know, because they've had what feels like a good training session. And then when they look back at some clips of themselves, they, they're a little bit disappointed because it doesn't exactly look like how it felt. And I think the reason for that is that they're not really aware of what they're actually doing wrong. So they look back at that footage and it, they know it doesn't quite look right, but they can't really tell what they need to adjust in order to make it look how they want. A big proportion of questions and inquiries people approach me with are about my speed and explosiveness because those are sort of two of my strongest attributes. But really it's quite a difficult thing to approach because it's not just one area of training. All of these things basically work together. So you don't just do one certain thing for training, one thing for technique, one thing for power. There are different methods to train all of these things, but they all need elements of each other to work together. So for instance, in terms of speed, it's no use training specifically things for speed drills, for instance, if your technique's really poor to begin with, because if your technique isn't economical, meaning there's very little wasted movement, then you're naturally gonna be slower by default because you're having to drag your body through a wider range of movement to execute that technique. So this stuff we're gonna to cover today is some of the bare bones foundational elements that you're gonna be able to build on top of. So this is one of the first things you should really address, and this should be constantly trained throughout all of your sort of martial arts or boxing journey. The way I'm gonna be showing you this stuff today is gonna to be literally me stood right here. I'm not gonna be hitting against a bag or any pads or anything like that. And the reason for that is because you could call this like a state of order. So there's no external stimulus coming in. There's nothing to throw me off the technique. So I'm gonna train it without any type of resistance because if you can't do the technique well, or to a sufficient level in a state of order, then you're never gonna be able to do it in a state of chaos. And when I say chaos, I mean with somebody striking back at you, having to move at awkward angles because they're blocking your approach and things like that. So it's really important to practice it like this first. And I would suggest as well, building, in, building something like this in through some shadow boxing before every session you do to constantly work and refine on those basic techniques. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna speak about here is our stance and how I like to stand when I'm executing my punching techniques. So as you probably heard me speak about before, all of the power and all of the energy that goes into our final strike at the end comes up through our legs. And so we need to make sure this is quite sufficient. And the way I like to stand, I would say, my stance generally is quite long and I like to get quite low. So some people like to stand up a little bit more, but I generally tend to like, like to stand a little bit longer, kind of like this. And so you can see here how my weight is quite distributed centrally, but I can, I can shift it forward or backwards, however I need to move. One thing I notice a lot of people do when they start out and they're really struggling is they have too narrow of a stance like this and their weight's sort of all over the place. And when you're like this, because you need this wider base with the central weight in the middle because then you're much more able to move around from that position. If you're here, you can easily just, even leaning over that little amount, I fell off balance there. So when, when it comes to throwing strikes generally, if you're stood too much like this, I've noticed, especially when people do a cross, for instance, is they will lean really forward like this. And I'm almost, I'm almost actually falling completely off balance in just that position. So you can imagine if you were to try to throw towards an opponent and miss in that type of position, you're just gonna fall completely off balance and just get punched. So I like to stay here because even if I, even if I throw a powerful shot and miss, I can still recover and bring my weight into however I want to be from there, okay? So figure out what works for you. I'm quite short, I'm only 5'7", so this works quite well for me to get nice and low. But if you're tall, obviously your center of gravity is gonna be in a different position, so you might wanna adjust it. I would say mine's probably 
maybe double shoulder width apart and I'm a little bit side on as well a little bit of a bladed stance I don't like to be too front on I like to kind of stand like this or like this because I find that that works well for my body type if you're a bit taller you can stand a little bit narrower but I wouldn't go much more narrow than this because then you're getting into the territory where you can fall off balance very easily so as I mentioned already the power is all generated in the legs and when people start off with this they can understand the point of turning through say if I'm going to throw a cross for instance obviously we need to lift the we need to stand on the ball of the back foot and twist our leg forward like this and the reason we do that is so we can align our body because if I try to punch with a flat foot from here can you see how I'm completely out of alignment and quite twisted up however what I've noticed with a lot of people is they will understand this part but what this is supposed to do is then allow the energy to travel up the body and then into the hips to rotate them as well so many people will turn like this but they'll keep the hips in the same place and they're still in this position so all of the different parts of the body, whenever you're throwing a punch, and this happens with all punches, but I'm just gonna focus on straight punches today for the example of this video. Um, all of the energy needs to travel up through the different points. And if one of them's out of alignment, so for instance, if I turn through here, but my hips don't rotate enough, I've developed sufficient energy into this part of my body, but if these hips don't turn, it's gonna almost kind of, um, become stuck at this point. Some of it will come through into the punch, but it's not gonna be as effective as if I really drive that hip through into that strike as well, if that makes sense. So that's just the example of the hips and the legs, but this also then transfers through the core to the shoulders, down the elbow and into the arm, which we're gonna be covering in the next parts of this video. So I think one of the most important things for people to focus on when they start with this stuff is really turn, really getting used to that turn of the body. And you can just, you can, you don't even have to throw a punch when you're doing it. Can you see here how I'm in this position and I'm just, I'm just turning like this from my regular stance here and I'm turning through, but I'm allowing it to go into the hip. I'm not just going like this because can you see how my body's just staying there and my legs actually sliding back now. You need to turn with this as well. So it's like you're shifting forward and the hip turns. So if my hips are in this position here, when I turn that foot and move the hips, they, they straighten up and they might even go a little bit further than that when I actually extend the punch at the end as well. So it might feel almost like you're going too far, especially if you're used to just doing it like this where all the punches are coming from the arm and there's no connection with the rest of the body, but you must get used to turning through so it becomes second nature. And like I said, it will probably feel like you're going a bit too far, but eventually you'll get used to that and that will just be the way that you execute it. Now, the next thing that a lot of people tend to do is they, have too much of a straight back and this tends to come as well from the too narrow of a stance because you must stand up straight because if not it, you just feel a bit strange so in this position here this is my stance again like I said a lot of people will be too straight up and you do often get this when people have done a kickboxing style that's the way they tend to box because they're used to this position for their kicking for instance and they punch from that same position but in my opinion it's much more effective to be in that dish position because that's going to store your power and allow you to really generate that force through so in this in this more sort of i don't want to call it hunched because i don't want you to be like this but you want to be in more of that um you want to keep that composure throughout all of your techniques whichever you're throwing okay don't allow it to go like this and some people are so kind of uh it's not exactly core weakness but they're so unused to doing it in this way that they'll sometimes punch and even kind of go opposite to that so it's almost like a reverse flexion rather than being in like this so you must maintain that and you do that by keeping the core engaged and when I say engaged it doesn't mean tense like you know trying to show your ab muscles for instance engaged means almost like 50 to 60 percent tense because that's also going to be able to control your trunk movement and your footwork and leaning back and then throw in your energy into those strikes as well so now we've covered the basic stance and the kind of energy transfer that comes through the body into the strike at the end what we're going to talk about now is i would say one of the biggest sort of return on investment things you can do in your punching technique so this is something that is actually very easy to correct but if you're able to do it and build that into a habit, it's gonna make, make all your techniques just go up to a different level. And all, it's a very simple thing, but all it is, is literally sending your punches out on one line and then retracting them on the same line as well. And also at a certain amount of intensity and speed. So it sounds super simple, but you wouldn't, you'd be surprised at how many people might throw out a nice jab and it drops down off that line. So if I'm throwing my jab from here, for instance, when I throw this to here, it needs to retract along that same line same thing with my cross if i just do 
if I perform a really nice cross here and then I kind of drop it down after my stance, it's like the punch is just incomplete. So the punches should go out along the same line and return along the same line. And you obviously practice this slowly first, but you want to throw them out on one line and then back along the same line. And can you see how it almost looks when I throw that cross, that cross from there, as I retract the cross, it almost looks like I've rewound the first part of the movement. So if this is the first part of the movement, when I retract it back, it almost looks like you've just sort of pressed rewound on that footage and gone back a few frames. So keeping it along those same lines. Now, obviously, wherever you're hitting from at certain angles, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. But as a general rule, this is definitely something you should practice. And you want to imagine almost that the punches are between you're punching through like a tube or something like that and you can only put your hand through it and pull it back you don't want it to drop off that line so when i say that i don't want it to go like this or i don't want it to go jab cross and then i drop it down as you often see beginners do so one thing i always like to think about with this is just bear in mind if you're throwing a punch at 100 100 speed say for instance mentally imagine retracting it at 110% because obviously this is a position whenever you have one of your arms sticking out you've lost one of your defenses there so you need to make sure that you get that back for defensive purposes but also in terms of the way the punch looks and how sharp it is it needs to be sharp all the way through not just 50% of it while it extends so remember to retract it back in so it's no good if I throw a really nice cross and then drop it down for instance or even if I bring it back it's just slow and a lot of people will do that. It's almost like their punches hang in the air. So you want to make sure when you throw it, it comes back in from there, yeah? Back in from there. See how they all come along those same lines, yeah? Also, when I'm doing that, some people, when they begin to implement this, they take it a bit too far. So this is something to watch out for as well because you don't want to almost do this sort of like a thing that you see in like the old karate tournaments where they punch someone and then pull it back too far like this and it almost goes like way past the guard so when you do retract it it only wants to go to back here again back to your guard it doesn't need to go like like this and you do see people do that because that's going way past again it's too much even if you extend in right so just back to guard one two yeah or two one see how i bring my jab back into that position yeah one two from there and back to that guarding position. So those are just a few general things that I would say uh, what goes towards making that really clean and sharp technique. But they're only very simple things, but they take a lot of practice in order to make habitual. And obviously you need to dedicate regular time to doing that through your training and making time to work on just technique as well. Too many people don't want to do this stuff and they want to just go on a bag straight away and they're likely to injure themselves or just punch with no power or no effectiveness because they don't have the fundamental technique down and often they'll be wanting to just go super fast all the time and it's like those people need to literally take it right down to the absolute fundamentals and literally move like this so if, if you're not used to doing it this way then you need to literally be moving like this one two moving around a little bit one two yeah one two see I'm going through all those stages and even if you have to break it down further than that, you turn, you turn, you punch, you retract through. Very slow. Just repeating that technique because if you're not able to do it at that speed with that form, you're never going to do it quicker. And that's people have jumped too far ahead and they're trying to go too fast and all the punches are like, like these little, like I call them T-Rex punches, you know, like the, the Tyrannosaurus has those small arms and it, <laughs> it doesn't extend. That's what they look like. They're not used to extending it. And you're only going to be able to have it really fast and long at the same time through training it. So unless you're able to do it like this at this speed, you're never going to be able to fa quickly extend and be able to extend it like that and do it at that speed. Okay. So this just takes consistency and time and you, you don't even want to think of, oh, I have to do these techniques again today. I have to practice the techniques today. This, this should be something that you just want to every time you train should be should be something that you do just second nature you always practice some of these techniques i've been training for years and i still do you know i still warm up with these techniques every time i train it should be like something like brushing your teeth you wouldn't go oh i have to brush my teeth today it's just something you do that's how you want to get this type of stuff and that's how you're really going to develop it because i would say the amount of times you probably think you have to do something in order to develop it to that level times that by 10 
that's probably a more realistic number but you, you shouldn't be even thinking of it anyway like that it should be just you should be aiming to just make it second nature so that's why again I always talk about this but you need to enjoy the process and what you're doing because if everything's just a means to an end that you you can't stick to it in that in that mind frame so that's practicing the techniques in a state of order and order meaning there's no external stimulus there's nobody coming at you and stuff and then when you start to add different things on top of that it becomes more difficult again so the first thing is to learn it just like this static and then start adding some basic footwork in because that changes everything once again and adds another layer of difficulty and challenge because as you start to move your body especially if you pivot and things you've got to get used to your center of gravity resetting itself before you can strike again i see so many people who have like no business doing complicated footwork or trying to do complicated footwork and big long combinations of punches when they can't even do a nice jab and cross in a static position so they'll start to be trying to do this footwork and punching in the middle of steps when they have no center of gravity and stuff and it's just the wrong way of thinking start start slowly start at the beginning and build up the skills because then everything you do on top of that is gonna not only be much easier but it's gonna be much more effective as well because you, you have that foundation of strength underneath everything. So I hope you enjoyed this one today, guys. I haven't done one of these videos where I sort of speak to camera and take you through a skill for quite a while, but I'm gonna start doing more of these because I just find it's a much better way to teach you know, techniques while I'm actually doing it and speaking to you on the fly so I can explain what I'm doing. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it guys. And if you'd like to book a coaching call with me for any help with any of this stuff or any things with mindset and things like that, anything that basically I cover on the channel that you'd like some personalized help with, then you can book that in the link below and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.